as we said, the first part tells us all about the laws of purification. We heard that last night in the Red Heifer. But for me, what is crucial in this parasha, perhaps are human emotions that have been overlooked. In Judaism, in Judaism, our prophets, our ancestors that we admire are human beings. And they have the same feelings and emotions, be it Moses, Aaron, Jacob, Joseph, all of them. I think that's wonderful because it means if they had emotions and were human beings, and yet Hashem called Moses the greatest prophet that ever lived, it means that you and I, in spite of all our inadequacies, in spite of all our mistakes, in spite of everything we've done wrong, we've also got the chance to become great in Hashem's eyes. And so let's see why something that sages have discussed for thousands of years, why? Why did supposedly Hashem punish Moses and Aaron because they were so angry with the people Remember, I read to you very clearly that Hashem told Moses to speak to the rock and water would come. And the people had complained throughout this entire journey. That's what human beings are like. I don't know, Marianne, if it's specifically the Jewish community because they com we complain all the time. We're a stiff-necked people and impossible, but actually I think it means humanity. And you can hear the average human being, most people just complain and moan even when they get what they want. In two minutes, they've forgotten exactly as the Israelites in the desert. And Moses and Aaron were so upset that after bringing these people all the way, after seeing the miracles that Hashem, God, had performed through Moses, they still complained again. Of course, in a desert, there's no water. But Moses, as they say, lost his school. And what did he do? He hit the rock twice. He was so angry. And you heard me read, he and Aaron said to these people, you rebels, must you complain all the time? Yeah, no comment. So, Let's have a look. The brothers are judged supposedly to have acted wrongly. And both are told by God that they will not enter the land. Aaron later dies. The people are attacked. And they ask God for help and they're victorious. The people once again complain about food and water and are bitten by venomous snakes. They do Jeshua, they ask God for forgiveness, and of course, Hashem, an ever, ever forgiving God, forgives them. But we forget in all of this to mention perhaps someone who was much more important to Moses even than his brother, and that was his sister Miriam. At this point of time, when Moses hit that rock in anger and said to the people, must you always complain? And in God's eyes, that was wrong, which it was, he lost his school. We forget that he had just before that lost his sister Miriam. And she had been at his side. If it weren't for Miriam, we would never have had a Moses. We wouldn't have had a Jewish people. She was the one who, when Pharaoh ordered all the firstborn of Egypt to be killed, all the firstborn males to be killed, she was the one who had this brilliant idea at six years old to put this little baby Moses in a basket, bulrushes, and put him on the river Nile. And Pharaoh's daughter saw him. 
can you believe it for a six-year-old child? And she went up to Pharaoh's daughter. And, and of course, Pharaoh's daughter knew it was a, a Hebrew child. But she had compassion and she said nothing. And this little girl said to her, would you like a wet nurse? Because the Pharaoh's daughter said, well, I'm going to take this child as my own. And this child brought their mother, their own mother as a wet nurse to bring up Moses. Unbeknown to anyone except Pharaoh's daughter, that he was Jewish and he was brought up as an Egyptian. So if it were not for Miriam, you and I would not be here. There would be no Moses. He would have been slaughtered with the other first males. And this is something that has been totally overlooked. And this is why I wanted to bring it up today because it is so easy to think of Moses as perfection. None of us are perfect. And neither was Moses, Baruch Hashem. Because if he was, then we have no chance to be unique in Hashem's eyes. And what, the, what some sages think is at that moment, he was overcome with the grief of having lost his sister, Miriam. Because of him, he knew that she had saved his life. She was at his side. She was the person who led with Moses all the time. She actually led the woman. In those days, they were more separated. And she led the woman. So Moses' heart was broken. And it was at that time, with this emotion and hurt inside him, that some sages think that is why he struck the rock. Well, that drama tension was nothing like the emotional distress that he was experiencing inside at the loss of his sister. But surely Moshe, now Moses, now 40 years older than when he'd struck the rock before and it, 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 in a good way, with all this experience, shouldn't he have coped with the drama better, Serona? And without that emotion, couldn't he have kept it inside? So the text gives us a clue. The whole, the, in the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zinah. You heard me read that. And they stayed at Kadesh. Miriam died and was buried. And there was no water for the community. She was also always associated with water. But so when Miriam died, in a way, the water ceased. But Another way of reading this is that Moshe lost control because his sister Miriam had just died. He was in mourning for his elder sibling. It is hard to lose a parent, but in some ways it is even harder to lose a brother or a sister from our own generations. So it was not simply the Israelites' demand for water that led Moses to lose control of his emotions, but rather dealing with this in the midst of his own grief. The Israelites may have lost water. Moses lost his sister, who had watched over him, as I said, as a child, guided his development, supported him throughout the years, and helped him carry the burden of leadership. And I'd like to just conclude there by saying, how many of us have had someone we love hurt us when they've been angry or spoken to us in the wrong way and we've responded back? How many of us have looked beyond the hurt, the anger, the bad words of someone? We haven't. We've hated them or we've blamed them or we've said, why couldn't Moses have controlled himself? How many times have you and I done that with a family member or a friend or a colleague or a committee member in this congregation? 
let us think when someone you are dealing with is basically a good person, basically has the right, you know that they have the right motivation. You know they've been good to you in the past and you've seen them do good. If that same person that you respect and love loses it for the moment and does something to hurt you, think of Moses and his sister. Don't respond. Just say, I understand that you're upset at the moment. I'm sorry if I've had a part of it, but may we help you? Can I help you? Because this is the lesson that God wants us to learn from this parasha. And just because we love animals so much, Serona, I'm going to remind us all of the donkey, which we'll be reading about shortly anyway. And when he was struck several times, the donkey opened his mouth and God put the same words in the donkey's mouth that I'm asking you to think of when maybe someone has hurt you or maybe you have other feelings about them and you don't like them. And the donkey said, have I ever done anything before to hurt you? Am I not a good servant? Have I not done well with you? So in the same way, let us be kinder to people who perhaps do something which is hurtful. And let us rather understand that when someone you respect and love, as everyone respected and loved Moses, is hurting you, it's because they're hurting inside. And also we know practically that a younger person without the ideas of, of Egypt and slavery had to lead the people into the promised land. Shabbat shalom.